Inilah tempat ayah ibuku percaya Takkan ada batas untuk mimpiku bergerak Belajar tunggu cari pelita Terang hilang Good morning, respected teachers, mentors, guests, proud parents, and beloved students. Welcome to the student's individual presentation for year nine culminating project. Thank you for coming today. First and foremost, let me introduce myself. I'm Miss Eki, and I will be your moderator for this session. After going through the journey of middle school for the past three years, all year nine students will go through a culminating project. This project also is a medium for students to demonstrate their chical competencies that have developed throughout the years. They invested the needs in the community and then proposed an action plan in order to solve the issue. Today, they will present their journey from the past nine months in doing this project. So, we have a few students of year nine here that will present their culminating project. Each student will have a maximum of eight minutes. And after all the presenters are done, we will open a question and answer session 
for 15 minutes. The audiences are more than welcome to ask questions to the presenters during the Q&A sessions using the comment section. So please, please feel free to post your comments on the uh, your question on the comment section. Before we begin the individual students' presentation, let me give you a picture of what to expect for the next hour to hour. We have a few students of year nine here that will present their community project and each student will have a game maximum of eight minutes and um, after that we will continue with the KNS session this year's theme for the project is through small actions everyone makes an impact the theme is aiming to achieve their targeted dimensions and competencies we see this culminating project as one of the ways to elevate the students' creativity by solving issues that they represent in their city. I think that is enough to briefly explain the concept of CP or community project. And now let's get on to the presentation part. On this second session, we have here today Priagung Tansatetulung, Quina Azura Hadi, Milo Raidasha Manu, Revan Andira Putra, and Gabriel Asima Ramakandra Tambunan. Without any further ado, let's start with our first presenter, Priagung Tansah Tetulung. Time is yours, Tetu. Okay, uh, thank you for the moderator, Bueki. And okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Priagung Tansah Tetulung, or, or, or you can call me Tetu, and I'm from your 9 b And today I'm gonna present about my uh, CP, pro, CP that I have worked all this time. Okay, so let's get to the issue. <coughs> miss, miss. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, as we can see from this photo, that uh, the uh, the issue that I uh, the issue that I took is uh, uh, the bad behavior of Indonesian netizen, and this picture is the, the only few example of uh, the bad behavior. Uh, of Indonesian citizen and why did I choose this topic? Yeah, so basically, uh, I choose this this topic because uh, uh, Indonesia's bad behavior is it can affect a lot of people, especially on their mentality, and also it, it can have a bad, bad effect on uh, Indonesia's reputation towards the world. Okay, so let's uh, move to the goals. Uh, uh, the the, the goal of my project is to persuade and educate Indonesia's people to use the internet wisely, especially uh, on using the social media. So yeah, so basically I want to uh, educate them to use internet wisely and not uh, rude, be, uh, rude, uh, bad, rude, be, uh, bad behavior on the in internet, so such as like uh, hating or bully someone or uh, spread fake news. Okay. Oh, so, and so this is uh, my SDG and the relation to my CP topic. Like as we know, SDG or Sustainable Development Goals is the is a, a seventeen of uh, interconnected interconnected uh, development that uh, 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 interconnected development and that promote the, the promote aim to promote the uh, the social, uh, economic, and the and the development in the world. And the the SDG the SDG that that I choose is the fourth SDG. Uh, which is uh, the quality education and the mission statement of the for SDG is to uh, uh, is to uh, giving to quality education to for, for, yeah, for all for everyone for everybody around the world. And what's the connection? What's what's the connection uh, with my C CP topic? Yes, like I said before, uh, I want to educate people to use social media wisely. So that's why I choose this uh, for SDG. <coughs> okay, and. The timeline, uh, uh, the timeline of my CP just is uh, at the, at August. Uh, I'm do I I'm do I did my research and on December I make the IG page and start posting some post on my on the on my IG IG page and uh, March I present to uh, my school partner and May uh, I'm getting my feedback. Okay, uh, so the research and taking action. Uh, so here. Uh, uh, I, I I made a, uh, a little a, a survey as for the 
uh, middle school student in Chikau Serpong. And from this survey, uh, I found out that uh, uh, most of them that around age 12 to 15 uh, have received a bad comments from the social media and then uh, and they uh, feel uncomfortable or mad, sad and others uh, because of the comment. And uh, in, in like I said before, in March, uh, I, I went to my school partner, Skola Subono, and I presented, <coughs> presented uh, my project. And yeah, uh, I'm happy because I, I got a lot of good, uh, positive feedback. And the product, okay. Uh, so the product that I made is, okay. The product that I made is a, a IG page, uh, which is called Edutizen. You can follow it or you can scan scan it uh, to to see my IG page. So in that IG page, uh, I just like posting like uh, what was the case that uh, happened because of the bad behavior, Indonesia's bad behavior and uh, and the, what, the, what what something caused, caused that bad behavior and uh, what's the effect. So why, why did I choose this topic? Why, why did I just choose this product? Uh, because uh, uh, based, based on the survey that made by Cominfo or Kementerian, Kementerian uh, Komunikasi and Informatika, yeah, <coughs> Informatika, uh, uh, the, the survey said that uh, Indonesian people spend uh, uh, 778 percent uh, Indonesian people spend their five hours on the social media. So that's why I choose this uh, product, and uh, I'm really satisfied uh, satisfied uh, by by my product because, like, uh, a lot of my friends say uh, uh, say that uh, I delivered the message uh, well and clearly, and they they, uh, they they are satisfied too. So I'm happy. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tetu, for sharing your journey. Please give him a virtual round of applause using the chat room. Moving on to the next presenter, please welcome Quina Azura Hadi. Time is yours, Azura. Thank you, Maseki. Uh, a project to help and spread awareness. Hi, my name is uh, Queen Azura, a 15-year-old student in Chika Surpong. And next slide, please. What does it mean when a person says a broken home? The term broken home refers to an incomplete or less ideal of a family. It could mean divorced or separate parents, a physically abusive household, a verbally abusive household, and et cetera, et cetera. Next slide, please. Of course, certain people are familiar with the concept of a broken home. The actual issue is that they are unaware of how terrible the situation is. What they don't realize is that it has an important impact on a person, let alone a child. And those people struggle with open up, being, um, opening up to other people with whom they are close and they don't know what to say or do in a scenario like this. Because of this issue, it is more important for, it is much more difficult for children to open up to anyone. Um, my goal is to give insight to people who have less understanding of the definition of a broken home and its impact on children. Spreading awareness about it can have good outcomes. For example, you have a friend who lives in a broken home and you don't really understand what your friend is going through or you don't know what, how to comfort them, or you don't know what to say. It's also good to know to have something in the media that you could relate to on a deeper level with a lot of different people who goes through the similar situation as you. Um, these are my survey results that I have shared with multiple middle schoolers. Next slide, please. And more of the results. After I got my results, 59.9% people are familiar with the term broken home, and the rest are unfamiliar. But 59.5% of the middle schoolers don't live in one. What really brought my attention was the fact that most people who have answered my survey 
aren't sure of what to do when a friend rants when a friend of theirs rants to them about their family problems. And from my survey results, people were actually intrigued to my product. And speaking about my product, I wrote a book titled What Was Once a Family. It is about a child's perspective growing up in a Brooklyn home. Main character Nathan shares his memories about his childhood as he grew older and how he and his mother overcome their problems and traumas that were mainly caused by the father. In the story, it also includes his friend's miscommunication and how it got better over time. This book can help you. I wrote this book and the purpose is to spread awareness of how it could affect a child. It's a short story book, but it has more than enough for a person to learn more about a broken home. I have seven copies of this book and it is also av available online. This is my website to publish my book online. It is specifically for people who don't get to read my physical book, like for people outside of my school. And on the bottom right of the screen, you can scan a QR code that would lead you to the website. My process during the culminating project. First, I researched more about my issue, and then I brainstormed ideas for my product, and I asked other people's opinions about my idea, then I interviewed experts in my issue, and I shared my survey to middle schoolers, and I created main points about what I should have in my book, and I also created a storyline and started on writing, and when I finished writing, and then I started printing copies of my book, and I created a QR code that leads to my website for my book. And I printed flyers and a poster of my book's cover. And after all that, I have received feedback from people who have read my book. And that is it from me for today. Thank you for listening to me presenting about my project. Thank you, Zura, for sharing your journey. Please give her a virtual round of applause using the comment section. Before we move to the next presenter, let me remind the audiences once again, if you have any question, please feel free to post it in the comment sections because after the presentation, we will have the Q&A session so the presenters can answer your questions uh, by then. Moving on now, Next presenter, we will have Milo Ray Dashaman. Time is yours, Milo. Yeah, yeah makasih. Uh, thank you, Miss. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, welcome, friends and families, to my presentation. My name is Milo, and today I will present to you my CP talk. So let's begin, shall we? Yes. Okay. So first of all. What is the issue that my CP project will be covering? So, so the topic that I chose for my CP project is deforestation in Indonesia, especially in Kalimantan, because number one, Indonesia, specifically Kalimantan, has the largest rainforest in the world, only beaten by the Congo and the Amazon rainforest. Indonesia's forest is filled with 30 million hectares and is often called the world's lungs because of it. And number two, deforestation is a significant national and international issue that impacts us on a worldwide level as it affects everything and everyone, uh, animals, plants, and even ourselves. Uh, and here are just a few examples of destruction that it could cause. From 1995 to 2017, Indonesia has lost a total of 6 million hectares plus Kalimantan also lost nearly 150,000 orangutans over the past 16 years, which is the most rarest apes in the entire world. And lastly, more than 900,000 people in Indonesia have suffered from acute respiratory infections because of the smoke haze uh, of the fire in 2019. And third, products that are made from the forest, especially palm oil, negatively affects the environment. And it, it also increases deforestation a lot. Also, Indonesia is the largest palm oil consumer and producer. Uh, the proof is that palm oil is in 50% 50, 50 of all of our products. I mean, just search it up. Also, Indonesia got this position because of the large rainforest they have. So, 
to give you a visual look this is the kalimantan map from 1950 to 2020 as you can see it lost a lot of hectares and it uh, negatively impacts our world especially for the forest of kalimantan next miss now this brings us to the goal of this project and how i am going to achieve it so the goal of this project is to decrease deforestation in Indonesia by raising awareness of how much products that use palm oil, beef, soybean, paper and pulp, etc. Products that are made from the forest. And I will raise this awareness by using my product, which is an art installation that I made. I chose an art installation because of how challenging it is and also because how different it is to my previous CP project and how it could be a step up over it. I also chose an art installation because, well, there isn't many art installations that covers this issue. My speech, miss? So, done. My chikal competency focus uh, are the self-reliant and committed. Self-reliant because, well, I've always depend uh, a lot on other people. And, uh, well, small or big, I always uh, need other people's help. And I also chose committed because I always have these bad habits that are always present from a long time ago. And I uh, and that heavily uh, impacts the way that I made my CP project. So I need to be more responsible and independent, but also be committed to devoting a lot of my time to doing this project and avoid all the bad habits that I made. And to be honest, I think it is still in progress since I still depend on multiple people's help. And I sometimes get distracted from my objectives sometimes. So overall, I think it is still in progress and I probably need further development to achieve these dimensions. Yes. So if you are wondering about the process of this project or the timeline, then go look at yourself. As you can see, the first two months I spent choosing the topic for my CP and the product that I wanted to make for the project. And then the next three months, uh, I researched and delved in more to the issue, as well as exploring different concepts from my art installation uh, and also finalizing it. And then another two months passed and I spent that time making a few prototypes, each experimenting with different materials that best fit the art installation that I want to make. And finally, the final two months that I made the product, the posters, presentation, and I also pro promoted my project with my Instagram account. Yes, miss. Yes, next. Next speech, miss. Okay. All right. So taking actions. Many art installations come in different shapes, sizes, and also meanings. So my art installation is meant to raise awareness and to show the impact of deforestation and also why it's common, especially in Indonesia. My art installation takes the form of a dead tree uh, that is also surrounded by multiple stumps that vary in sizes. The tree is also surrounded by multiple wasted product packages that are made from palm oil, soybean, beef, etc. The, me the meaning behind it is that these products are the main factor of deforestation and how these products that we use in our daily lives heavily affect our environment. For a more clear look on my art installation, you can look at it uh, in here. Aside from the art installation, like I said, I also made uh, an Instagram account. And those are the, po the posters that I made. I also uh, made the three prototypes. The first one is made out of wire mesh. The second one is made out of tape and styrofoam. And the last one is made out of paper, uh, brown paper wrappings, wood, and also dry branches. There is also the art installation, and here it is, uh, and that is how it looks like. However, I haven't finished pol polishing it yet, so uh, tomorrow it'll look better. So, next speech. Next speech. Okay. So making all this isn't easy, and it is really challenging. There were numerous challenges that made this difficult. One of those challenges being my lack of experience on making this. So keep in mind that this is the first time I'm making an art installation. So I had to research a lot and go to numerous museums filled with multiple art installations created by talented artists and take them as notes or as inspiration for my art installation. 
So after I collected all that data, I tried to figure out the best way to make the art installation while also being realistic and time limited too. Not only that, but I also couldn't stop procrastinating and because of that, it wastes a lot of my time. This habit has been pretty old and has been with me for a long time. This also mean my CP project timeline even more messier and unorganized. So, stage. So in conclusion, what are my thoughts on this? So this was an overall interesting project, but I feel a little satisfied. And I think that this project is pretty successful. I just think that I still relied a lot on others' help and I didn't contribute did nearly as much as I wanted to. I wish I could do this project differently and do it better, whether it is deferring and sacrificing more of my time to this project or just avoiding my bad habits. There's a lot that I could have changed to make this project better, but overall, uh, this project was really successful and I am a bit satisfied with this. Although I don't think I contributed enough to it. I wish I could polish it more. Next page. Okay. So before I end this presentation though, if you have any questions regarding my CP project, feel free to write it in the comment section. Anyway, thank you everyone for tuning into my CP presentation. Thank you, Milo, for sharing your journey. It is indeed a very alarming issue. Please give him a virtual round of applause using comment section. Moving on to the next presenter, please welcome Revan Andira Putra. Okay, um, hello, my name is Revan, and today I will... Okay, um, apologies. Um, okay, anyways, uh, hello, my name is Rafan, and today I will be presenting to you about my CP, which is called Alter Smooth. So without further ado, let's start the presentation. Now, um, before, before we start, um, I, I would like to ask all of you, um, what is that? What is that in that picture? All right, if you, if you answer cigarettes, then you are correct, as this is my CP topic. Next slide, please. Next. So Alter Smoke is a project where, where I will be posting things that are related to cigarettes, whether it will be things like fun facts or uh, the side effects of cigarettes or uh, anything that is just generally related to cigarettes. Next slide, please. So uh, fun, uh, uh, fun fact, I actually got this idea uh, way back then when one of my family members um, was a sm 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 cigarette addict and he got sick. Uh, he, got, he basically got infected by this illness called tuberculosis. If you don't know what that is, it's basically the way that works is the nicotine that's inside your body can easily uh, absorb or attract any uh, sort of bacteria or viruses that is in your environment. So example, um, let's say you're eating with your friends, you open your mask, you were smoking, you're having a great time, but little did you know that your friends might be sick and when they cough, you know, um, that bacteria has a high chance of getting inside your body. And another thing was I wanted to spread more awareness about this topic as this is very much a serious topic and um, this affects people's lives. A lot of people died because of this. So that is why I really want to uh, choose this as my topic. Next slide, please. So yeah, I already got my topic, which is about cigarettes and I wanted to make an IG account. So I was hoping that my CP would reach to as many people as I could because you know, the more people, the more audience, the more info that uh, my account will will spread to people. And, you know, it's a good thing for me because they know what I'm trying to uh, tell to them. And yeah, another thing is I wanted my uh, IG to be as reliable and up to date as possible since I don't really want to uh, post fake info 
especially to my audience, and that's not my intentions. And lastly, uh, since I'm making an Instagram account, I wanted to have more than 10 posts as uh, less than that is not a lot. And I feel like I need more than that. And I wanted to have good engagement rate. If you don't know what that is, it's basically uh, things such as the likes, the followers, and the story views. Next slide, please. So, you know, my topic is about cigarettes, right? And it is obviously re related to health. So, which is why I chose good health and well-being for my SGD goals. And yeah, the reasoning why is mostly because um, these are basically connected, you know? Uh, cigarettes are basically related to health and men like both mentally and physically. And same goes to here. So yeah, next slide, please. So, you know, I already have the main idea. I already know my goals. And so basically I decided to start designing both my logo and my post. Uh, these pictures over here, those are early designs of it. So I don't actually use these. Um, so the reason why I decided to design, design it first uh, before I even make my account is because I want to have a clear vision on what my uh, post will look like, what colors am, am I gonna be using and basically how much info I'm gonna squeeze into one post. And as for the logo, I wanted to make it look similar to um, the no smoking sign, basically. <laughs> Next slide. So, you know, I already, I already designed my post, but there's just something missing, which is the information itself. So I basically interviewed a doctor who I've met a couple of times uh, while um, having my medical checkup, checkup last year. Um, her name is Dr. Francisca Farah. Um, basically, I interviewed her via Zoom, and I basically got a lot of information that, you know, I don't really know much about smoking. And one of them is like, she explained to me that vape aren't actually a great alternative to cigarettes because both are still dangerous. It can still cause harm to you um, and all those kind of stuff. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I already got some information from uh, my expert, except I still needed more, of course. If I wanted to post 15 posts, then I still do need more. So what I did was I did my own research and I created a survey. And with the help of my mentor, Butias, I uh, spread it around to some multiple groups, especially year, year 10. And... The result is 70% of students said that um, their family do not smoke, which is obviously a good thing. <laughs> and once you know, I've done with that, I basically compiled um, everything, including the survey results, into one doc so that I could easily just take the info and just put it into my post. And you know, since uh, I have done everything else, I could easily just create the account launch your account and um, post every week or every two weeks depends on my schedule. All right, so since uh, last week I have posted my last post, which was a 15th one, basically my project is finished. I've, I've reached my goal and, and um, there's a lot of challenge that I face while doing this, uh, especially things such as time management, um, procrastination and basically motivation. And, you know, of course I solved those problems or else I, I wouldn't be here. Uh, so the way I solved those is I just remind myself uh, that this is my culminating project. Um, my, my whole purpose here is to inform people. So definitely I need to finish this, you know, I need to finish my uh, culminating project. It's for my grades as well. So, <laughs> and in conclusion, uh, a lot of people do smoke, especially in Indonesia. So that's why I wanted to uh, choose this as my CP topic so that I could remind them that it's not that healthy. You know, I don't, I don't mind you guys smoking, but it's not that healthy. I just want to remind you that feeling. And as for the, the likes and the views and like the followers, engagement, yeah, engagement, um, it's not that bad. Uh, gotten around 600 followers, but as for like likes, it's not that much. But hey, 
at least I, I still got some. <laughs> so, you know, my personal opinion, uh, this, I, I, I think I did this project very well. Uh, although the way I executed, um, probably the d design wise could have been better, but, um, it is what it is. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you have any feedbacks, you can post it down in the live chat. Uh, have a nice one. Thank you, Refan, for sharing your journey. I hope your action can make a big impact on the outside world. Okay, please give him a virtual round of applause using the chat room. Before we move to the next presenter, let me remind you once again, if you have any question to the presenters, please feel free to post it in the comment sections because after the presentations, we will have Q&A sessions. Moving on to the next and the last presenter for this session, please welcome Gabriel Asima Ramakandra Tambunan. Time is yours, Andra. Thank you, Ms. Eki. Um, hello, my name is Andra. Um, before we get to on to my presentation, I would like to share an issue on organic waste, otherwise known as food waste. So according to the Indonesian Ministry of Environment and Forestry in 2017, 42 million tons of organic waste is produced in Indonesia per year, and 2.7 million tons of methane gas is produced in the process. And by the way, I'd like to add that 40% of the general trash in Indonesia is food waste. And now I want to share you something that I found pretty interesting. And that is ecoenzymes. And they are multi-purpose liquid made from organic waste, specifically fruit and vegetable scrap using water and molasses. And they were first developed by Dr. Rosukan Pumpenvong from Thailand in the 80s. But what's so special about ecoenzymes? So the first thing is that they are made from the aforementioned organic waste and they are biodegradable and not poisonous to humans or plants or animals. And the second thing is that they have a wide range of uses, uh, which I can't actually list all of them in a single slide as it's too much. And so I'll just give three pointers for now. So the first thing is cleaning. You can use it to clean your house. You can use it to wash your clothes, wash your dishes, as well as you as a disinfectant. And the second thing is that it can be used to treat various skin wounds and you can even use it as shampoo if you want. And the third thing is for farming as you can use it as fertilizer and a natural and eco-friendly pesticide that doesn't harm the plants at all. So good morning. And my name is Gabriel Asima Ramakanja Tambunan and I'm here to present my culminating project, Ecoenzyme for You. So what is my goal? My goal is to raise awareness about the organic waste issue. And I want to promote ecoenzymes and show that it's usefulness to the world. And I'm doing that by making a campaign about it to the general audience through a website and videos. So what's my sustainable development goal? So I chose responsible consumption and production goal 12, as it aligns the most with what I'm doing in my culminating project. And that is to ensure by 2030, have global per capita food waste at a consumer and retail level. So next is my Chico five star competency. So I chose the innovative dimension instead of the skillful and effective thinker competency and I chose this because making website and making video requires you to have a creative thought process and forces you to think outside of the box a lot of the times. Anyways, onto my research. Uh, my first research is a questionnaire to the public on ecoenzymes to test the knowledge on, eco on the public on ecoenzymes. And there are employees, there are students, there were uh, doctors, lawyers that that uh, responded to the questionnaire. And in total, there were six, 161 responses. 
And the most important question here was if they knew about ecoenzymes or not. And 32% know about ecoenzyme. And personally, I think that's not enough people, despite its wide range of uses and benefits for daily life and the environment. So for my second research I did was an interview with Miss Yukarafika Agustin, who is a chemistry lecturer at the Indonesian University of Education. And in this interview, I wanted to figure out how ecoenzymes really work, the science behind them, so I can have a better understanding of it. Now onto my planning process. The first thing I did, I started from research earlier, and such as the interview and questionnaire earlier. And the second thing was to make ecoenzymes. So I have hands-on experience so I can have more content for the third and fourth making the website and making videos. And after that, the final thing is to launch the website and launch the videos. So here's some of the footage from my process. And on the top left, you can see me making ecoenzyme. I'm just pouring them into a bottle. And below that is how I plan my one of my components in my website. And beside that is the document for website for planning my website, which is, which has the color palette, the font, and the pages. So here's my final product, ecoenzymeforyou.com. And it currently has four articles that are related to ecoenzyme. And the website and the website comes in both English and Indonesian, though I'd like to clarify that the Indonesian version isn't 100% Indonesian, as some of the graphs and pictures are in English. And anyways, on to the next final product is my YouTube channel, also under the name ecoenzyme for You, which has two videos in English, only, only in English. So you can, so you can check these out by scanning the QR code here or typing in linktr.ee slash ecoenzyme for you. Or you can even just search it on Google and it'll pop up probably. And I'm going to have to continue the presentation. So for those who have missed this section, I'm going to put a QR code in the corner of the next slides. Now onto my challenges. There were two challenges I faced during this culminating project. The first one is commitment. And it was very difficult to give 100% to a single project for a whole entire school year. And the more I carried on, the more demotivated I get and the more frequent and frequently I get lazy to work on the culminating project. And the second thing is poor execution. And so when I first started culminating the culminating project, uh, I made a whole timeline and whole plan list of things I wanted to do for culminating project. However, I ended up not doing a lot of them or just or not or not working on them quickly or according to the time. And I also just get delayed or not do them at all. However, I overcame these challenges obviously because I wouldn't have a website or a YouTube channel right now if I didn't. So I had three things. I had three thing three solutions that helped me to overcome these challenges. The first one was to just keep motivating myself, which is definitely the most positive thing. However, it's the most it's the least effective one compared to the second solution was to get others to force me to work on it, to tell me to not slack off. And it helps me like just get the pressure to like just keep on working. But it's not as effective as the third one, which was probably the worst one, but it's the most effective one. And that is to get near a deadline because I somehow work a hundred times better, more efficiently when I'm getting near a deadline. However, this is a toxic kind of thing and I don't, recommend to just wait until the deadline and you should definitely do the first method and to keep motivating yourself and if you do that consistently enough you can just get over the challenge and anyways on to my reflection so i first learned how to manage my time more efficiently and increase my commitment skill 
And overall, I just feel satisfied on Eco Enzyme for You. And I'm just relieved that e- that culminating project is over. But what I would have done differently was to make more articles and videos, as given the time span of almost this entire school year, four video I mean four articles and two videos is definitely not a lot for for a whole year of work. And I just hope that EcoEnzyme for you can inspire people to make EcoEnzyme or notice about the organic waste problem. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. And don't forget to check out the website and YouTube channel. And if you have any feedback or comments, just leave it in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Andra, for sharing your journey. With all that, all of the presenters have done presenting their CP journey. Next up, I would like to invite audiences to ask questions to the presenters, and you can write your questions in the comment sections. So let's begin the question and answer session. All right, while waiting for the audiences to ask their questions, let me start asking you guys questions. So, um, did you have any alternatives before deciding on your chosen actions, before you chose your today's actions? So, did you have another alternatives before that? And if yes, what are those? All right, so, um, yes, I do have one. If I remember correctly, I was well, I was gonna choose about mental health, more specifically how to take care of your mental health. The reason why is because you know it was two years lockdown, and you know a lot of people that are somewhat depressed and sad because they haven't seen their like friends, uh, family for in a while. So I wanna I wanna cover that topic uh, at first, but then uh, I got reminded of this and I feel like this is a way better more topic than uh, mental health. So, I mean, in my opinion, I feel like this is way better. So, yeah. All right, what about the other one? Uh, for me personally, I didn't have any other ideas. So my topic, the broken home was the first thing that came to my mind. Uh, before the uh, my topic about the deforestation, yes, I did have an alternative, which is about GMO foods. Uh, I uh, my previous idea was GMO foods because like it was an interesting topic, and uh, it was it's like an underrated issue. Okay? It's not like many issue that people are covering, you know. But I eventually just moved to deforestation. Uh, for me, uh, I, uh, I have one uh, idea that I, I, I was about to choose back then, but it's, it, it's about uh, people who are affected by, by, by the pandemic. Uh, 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 and then, yeah, but, but turns out uh, I, I, I don't choose it because like, uh, I found that, 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 that I found an, another topic that like for me is more impor- important. Yeah, thank you. So for me, uh, before year nine started, I already decided on what I was going to do for a culminating project, which was ecoenzymes. But I haven't noticed, I, I mean, I didn't know what to do with ecoenzymes first. The first idea was to like test the effectiveness of ecoenzymes, but I rather just leave that to the researchers as that, that already has, like, that already exists. So instead, I wanted to make a campaign. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I believe it must have been difficult to choose your actions since there are so many options on the SDGs as well, right? All right, so we have questions here from the audience, from Keisha Alaya Putri. So to everyone, do you guys think you're going to be continuing your CP in the future? 
who wants to answer first? Maybe I'm gonna uh, continue to posting uh, another post about about my about something that related to my CPE project, but uh, I don't know. I don't know when. I don't know the, the exact time to continue my CP project. So uh, I'll probably won't continue uh, this CP project. But however, though, if I am still staying in the school, then I will like uh, redo my CP and maybe choose a different topic and just make it overall better because, uh, well, even though kayak CP aku sekarang ya lumayan bagus, even though it's pretty good, uh, I just think it could have been improved more on this one. Um, for me, since my product is writing a book and it's like already completed, I don't think I'd be continuing it. And yeah, that's it. I mean, for me at least, um, I don't really know if I would continue it or not. And since this is like an Instagram account, I could probably continue it. But at the same time, I don't know if I should continue it or not. I'm probably going to procrastinate it again. So yeah, I, ha- I highly doubt that I'm going to continue this. But yeah, it's just pro- uh, maybe. So for me, I think... I might continue it for another year, like add a post or a uh, article or another video. But since I'm moving school and the school is probably not, I'm not gonna have an, a lot of free time. I don't see that. I I, I doubt that I'm gonna make something. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I believe you guys have already have a lot of things on your plate for the future. So I wish you all good luck, whatever plan that you have for next. Okay, next question we have from Mari Belajar Bersama. So the question is, what did you gain from your CP? Who wants to answer first? Um, I'll answer first. Uh, so sure. what I gained I from... This I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, what did you gain from your CP project? surprising ones as well you know like a lot of people when i discuss about this topic a lot of people just said like things such as oh why not you just go vape you know vape is like healthier you know you won't won't get lung cancer or whatever but you know at the same time when i interviewed my expert you know it's like a total opposite because it's all not bad for you so you shouldn't be doing that so yeah i mean that's like one of the very surprising things i i just found out Well, for me, I learned more about um, about writing. My sister, she is a writer herself, and she also wrote a book for her culminating project when she was um, when she was here. And I did learn a lot from her, and I did gain a lot of feedback from my friends who have read my book. They think it's good, and they think it really hits deep. But yeah, most importantly, I learned more about writing and stuff like that. So uh, I gained a lot from my CP. Uh, like there is about deforestation. Like deforestation is already a really complicated issue. So I learned a lot about it. Uh, secondly, there is also about like making an art installation. Now I know the process and like the difficulties of making one. And also how uh uh and also about my behavior yeah gitu, gitu. so basically uh the problems that I faced that I faced and how I will do it better next time. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, something that I, I gained from my CP is like I just learned a lot that about that uh there's a lot bad thing that uh, happened because of the 
uh, bad behavior that caused by Indonesia's netizens. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, for me, uh, I learned more about, I learned better on how to make websites and stuff and videos as well as a, a lot of things about eco enzymes because i only knew the surface of it at the start but eco enzyme is really a complex thing yeah i see all right so whatever insights you guys get from the cp process i hope it can be benefited for your future all right with that i think that was the last questions to be answered by the presenters thank you everyone who asked who have asked the questions to the presenters and now i think it is very delightful to see such impactful and powerful projects of all presenters during the presentations so once again please give round of applause for all the presenters today and words of encouragement you can post it in the comment section for their too. all right i would like to remind you all that this event doesn't stop today we hope to see you all again um after this because there are still another session uh in the youtube scholastical official youtube so please stay tuned and there will also be an exhibition tomorrow in Terras Kota at 10 a.m. So if you are free, make sure you visit the exhibition of the students. Lastly, I would like to say thank you once more to all of the audience here today, the mentors, fellow students, proud parents, and also respected guests. Thank you for having me as your mentor and your host today. Good morning and see you in the exhibition. Bye-bye. Disinilah tempat ayah ibuku percaya Takkan ada 